It's Wednesday the 14th of September and today's class is with me, Chris from IELTS Daily. Hello, good to see you all. I've just been looking at some of the comments in the chat session. It's wonderful to see so many returning faces. Let's have a look to see who is here. Um, we've got lots of people all, from all over the world, which is always fantastic. Um, let me just open that up now. Here we go. There we go. We've got lots of people from all over the world. Hello to Mahmoud, who is a, a member of the channel. And we've got Akbota, also a member for, of the channel from Kazakhstan. Great to see so many of you here today. Um, lots of you. Hello to Paula. Good to see you and Ishpreet, also a member of today's channel. It's good to um, have you all here and um, being kind of able to participate. I always look forward to these classes. It's always a great opportunity for you guys to learn something and for me to learn something as well from you guys. What are we doing today? Well, the plan for today is to do some reading and I want you guys to pass the test the first time. One of the most annoying things for me is that some of you take the test five or 10, sometimes even 20 times. Let me ask a question in the chat now. I want you to tell me who, or tell me how many times have you taken the test already? And we will find the person in the chat who has taken the test the most or the greatest number of times. So in the chat, tell me how many times have you taken the test? And we'll get a gold medal for the person who has taken the test the most number of times and will hopefully help that person pass. Let's see who is going to admit to having taken the test. So we've got um, Jenny, uh, Jenny has taken the test twice. Wow, we've got somebody there. Um, JD Terry has taken the test 10 times. Okay, you're currently in the lead there, JD Terry. Well done to you. Uh, anybody wants to do more than 10? So we've got internal internet addiction, sorry, nine times. So not quite as many as JD Terry. And we've got um, unboxing masala 15 times. Okay, I think Kaman. I don't know if this is, if you're telling the truth. Maybe you are. I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of, but 36 times. And that may be surprising for some of you. And um, it's actually not that uncommon. You will, you will find that lots of people take the test many, many, many times. And unfortunately, this is a waste of money for a lot of you because you take the test and then you take the test again thinking that you're going to get a better score. But in reality, the biggest problem is that you don't understand why you're failing the first time. So let's try not to get the, the gold star award for the most number of times taking the test. What I would like you to do is hopefully pass the test the first time. And we are going to do some reading practice today with the hope that you will be able to pass the first time. Now, if you haven't already seen it, I need you to watch the reading strategy video, which is on the IELTS Daily Facebook pa um, YouTube page. This is really important because the strategy teaches you how to improve quickly. If you haven't seen the, uh, the IELTS Daily reading strategy, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to watch that because the tips that I give you, no skimming, no scanning, no reading for detail. These three um, skills, I think, are a waste of time. And maybe some of you in the chat today will have used those strategies and now you're using the strategy that I've taught you and hopefully you'll be able to tell the other students in the chat that that strategy works for you. Seriously, there's no point wasting your money trying to trying to beat the reading test if you're doing it the wrong way. So tell me in the chat, have you been the type of, or are you a person who has changed their reading style, reading strategy as a result? And have you improved your overall score? Let's see if anybody else has done that. Uh, we've got JD Terry, exam tomorrow. Good luck to you. 
Pooja, pray for me tomorrow is my exam. Well, I'm not sure praying will help, but I think working hard and doing the best that you can is going to put you in good stead. Okay, um, let's see if anybody has done their pre my reading strategy. Not yet. Some people haven't done it yet. Um, go and watch it. I will post the um, the link. We've got Han who said the strategy is really useful. My reading score has improved a lot. Thank you for that, Han. Great to have that piece of feedback. Okay, okay, good, good for you. So what we'll do today is, um, and Ishpri says, your strategy helps me a lot. Kaman said, got nine bands. Okay, so you're clearly not doing as well in some other parts of the test. We're going to do some practice today with reading. So make sure that you have your um, phones. If you're watching this on your phone, make sure that your phone screen is turned around because some of the text might be quite small. If you're watching on a laptop or a computer, great, because you're going to need the full screen to help you see the questions as much as possible. Here we go. We will start with the text on the left and the questions on the right. Good. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the strategy. All I'll do is go through the questions and show you where I find the questions and maybe talk a little bit about why and how the IELTS test writes questions. And you will you will start to see a pattern in how they create their questions. Let's see if we can do this now together. I'm going to sit back and do this with you guys now. Okay. Practical intelligence lends a hand. Dr. Rajendra Persaud explains how practical intelligence is linked to success. I'm just going to read the first paragraph. This year, record numbers of high school students obtained top grades in their final exams, yet employers complain that young people still lack the basic skills to succeed at work. The only explanation offered is that exams must be getting easier. But the real answer could lie in a study just published by Professor Robert Sternberg, an eminent psychologist at Yale University in the USA, and the world's leading expert on intelligence. His research reveals the existence of a totally new variety. Practical intelligence. Okay, so we know that the strategy is as follows. Professor Sternberg's study showed that, okay, qualifications are a good indicator of success at work. There was no mention about qualifications. Education can help people cope with real life problems. There was not any mention of real life problems. Intelligent people do not always achieve well at school. And high grades can indicate a lack of practical intelligence. Well, the trick here is to notice that the exam is using practical intelligence on the left and they're also using practical intelligence on the right. For me, that's usually a sign that there is something that... Um, it's an indicator that there's going to be an answer somewhere in this area, but this is a, a very useful piece of advice. If you find the same words in the question and the same words in the text, for me, this is a warning sign that this may not be the right answer. So if we look at the question again, the question says... Um, Professor Sternberg's study showed that. The problem is, um, it says here, his research reveals the existence of a totally new variety, practical intelligence. So this sentence really is the only part that gives any in insight into his study. So there's no real answer here. Okay, I'm sure that there's no answer yet. And what we do now is we don't go to question two because that's not the strategy. We go to question six. Okay, question six. 
Question six, classify the following characteristics as belonging to academic intelligence, emotional intelligence, EO, or practical intelligence tests. Okay, so for now, um, I don't see anything that talks about um, any of those. There's nothing that talks about AO, there's nothing that talks about EO, and the practical intelligence has only just been introduced at the end of the paragraph. So there's going to be nothing, or I don't think there's anything, which relates to that question. Now, if there is, we're going to come back and late to, to do it later. But for now, we're just going to soldier through and continue to the next paragraph. Next paragraph. Professor Sternberg's astonishing finding is that practical intelligence which predicts success in real life, has an inverse relationship with academic intelligence. In other words, the more practically intelligent you are, the less likely you are to succeed at school or university. Similarly, the more paper qualifications you hold, and the higher your grades, the less able you are able the, the less able you are to cope with problems of everyday life, and the lower your score in practical intelligence. So basically, what it's saying is, the more intelligent you are on paper, the less able you are to deal with practical problems. Let's see if we can find anything back in that question number one. Professor Sternberg's study shows qualifications are a good indicator of success at work. Actually, that's the opposite. That's not true at all. Education can help people cope with real life problems. That's also the opposite of what he said. But remember that the question does use the word real life here. And that's a really important trick that when the examiner is writing the test, they're going to be trying to trick you. Intelligent people do not always achieve well at school. That's also the opposite of what he said. And, and number one, high grades can indicate a lack of practical intelligence. Very obviously, this one here, we know that the word a lack of means low or not enough and therefore the more paper qualifications you hold the less able you are to cope with um, problems of everyday life and the lower your score there is the answer for question number one so the answer for number one is definitely d okay but we don't stop here we go to question two what is the deficit re referred to in the fourth paragraph? Okay, there's nothing here which is the fourth paragraph because we are only in the second paragraph. Okay, so what I would say now is, remember that these types of multiple choice questions, you have to be entirely sure that the information is paraphrased, that there is that they're not trying to trick you with keywords which are the same in both the question and the text. Also, 99% or 95% of the time, the questions for multiple choice will come in order. So you will find the answer for question one before the answer to question two in the text. And the answer for question three will come after the answer for question two. It's always worth on the paper. If you're doing the paper-based test, it's always worth putting a circle or putting an underline the place where you find the question. And I find a lot of the time, when I look at people doing the paper-based test, they scribble and they write on all over the paper. This for me is a distracting strategy. And I think really the best thing you want to do is only underline the sure place that you have found a question. Okay, on the computer delivered test, it's a little bit different, but you can, um, you may know this, you can leave comments. So here, you could leave a comment which said, 
that's where you found question one. Okay? Okay? Now, most, most, most of the time these questions will come in order. All right? So now we're going to come to question six. Academic intelligence, emotional intelligence, practical intelligence test. Now, we've spoken a little bit about practical intelligence. I'm not entirely sure that we have spoken about practical intelligence tests. I've, they've talked just in here about practical intelligence and what that means, but I don't think that they have spoken or written about practical intelligence tests. So I'm going to move forward for now. I'll just do a bit of a check. I just don't think there's anything in here that talked about tests. Okay, let's continue to paragraph three. Um, by the way, so far, so far, give me a thumbs up in the chat if this is easy to follow, if you are kind of on your, if you understand what we're doing, if anything is is uh, not making sense, please write and, and I'll try to look at your questions. But if not, if you learn something from today's class, please give this video a thumbs up and a like. I do, um, it's really, really, really helpful if you can do that so that more people can be helped as well. My long-term goal, my goal is to help as many people pass the IELTS test as possible. Okay, let's see if anybody has any specific questions. Thank you to you all for putting your thumbs up. Really nice to see you all there. Great to have you. Um, great to have understanding here. Good to have you all. Wonderful. Great, let's continue. We are on the next paragraph, which is paragraph three. Many people who are clearly successful in their place of work do badly in standard IQ, academic intelligence tests. Entrepreneurs and those who have built large businesses from scratch are frequently discovered to be high school or college dropouts. IQ as a concept is more than 100 years old. It was supposed to explain why some people excelled at a wide variety of intellectual tasks. But IQ ran into trouble when it became apparent that some high scorers failed to achieve in real life what was predicted by their tests. So what they're saying is here that it's not a very accurate measure of um, intelligence. So let's come here. Measures skills which are likely to improve with age. I should mention in this type of question, when you have to match things up, these ones aren't going to come in order because that would make life too easy. You wouldn't find the answers in order here. So we're going to have to go through each question and make sure that we understand the nature of each one. So the idea is this one. Um, assesses people's social skills. Um, none of those. Measures the ability to deal with real life difficulties. No. The oldest of the three tests. Now, it did mention, it did mention that the IQ test, the AO academic intelligence, um, is probably, probably the oldest, the IQ. So it's going to be more than 100 years old. It doesn't say it's the oldest, but what we can do is infer if we find that another part of the test is, um, if another one of the tests is younger. If it says that the EO test is 60 years old, then we will know that this is the oldest. So we're going to hold that one for now. We're going to reserve judgment. High scorers learn from their actions. No mention about that. High scorers are more likely to stay calm in difficult situations. No mention about that. Questions have more than one possible answer. There was nothing in this, uh, there was nothing in here which talked about the number of answers that were in the test. Okay, so right now I'm going to put a, oops, a question mark, that is going to be my 
provisional answer. Let's continue reading. This is quite a long paragraph, so let me just join this together. Here we go. Emotional intelligence, EQ, which emerged a decade ago. So this helps us because we know that a decade ago is more recently than a hundred years. And this one, a totally new variety. Therefore, we know that the answer for question number nine, the question that we were doubting, is definitely, definitely, definitely question A. It is the oldest because it's a hundred years old. So that really helps us find the answer to that one. Let's continue. Emotional intelligence, EQ, which emerged a decade ago, was supposed to explain this deficit. This deficit. What does the deficit mean? So this is important that there is, um, it says this, and so we're going to have to go back, um, we're going to have to go back and read what the problem was here. It said, the IQ ran into trouble when it became apparent that some high scorers failed to achieve in real life what was predicted. So there was a, basically, there was a big discrepancy. Let's have a look. People with high IQ scores could not score well in EO tests. Uh, sorry, EQ tests, it should be. EQ tests were unable to predict success at work. Hmm. This should be IQ, sorry. High IQ tests did not always lead to personal success and people with high EQ scores could not cope with real life. Um, this one is, for me, going to be... Let's, let's continue because this deficit comes here, which uh, it's this whole part of this um, text. Entrepreneurs and those who have built large businesses from scratch are frequently discovered to be high school or college dropouts. IQ is a concept. Um, it was supposed to explain why some people excelled at a wide variety of intellectual tasks, but IQ ran into trouble when it became apparent that some high scorers failed to achieve in real life what was predicted by their tests. Um, this deficit. I think we would have to read a little bit more. It suggested that to succeed in real life, people needed both emotional as well as intellectual skills. I think this helps us with the question because it talks about succeeding in real life. There was a problem with the IQ scores leading to personal success. We know that success is the same word as succeed. Therefore, the answer to this one would be C, okay? And let's just make sure that it can't be A and it can't be B. Um, it didn't talk about people could not score. It didn't say that they could not score. EQ tests um, were unable to predict success at work. There's no mention about success at work. People with high EQ scores could not cope with real life. It didn't mention anything about coping with real life. Okay, so the answer would be um, part C. Now, for some of you at this point, you are probably saying, oh my God, Chris, this is taking you so long. How am I going to do this in time in the test? And it is true that this strategy takes us longer when we're doing it in a class like this because we're talking about our answers. However, when you try to apply this strategy the first time, it will take you longer. And I say this all the time. The more you practice, the more you will be able to see how the strategy actually speeds things up. Because notice that we've actually already answered question nine, which is later on in the questions. So very often you will find two or three answers just in one paragraph. And that will really help you 
improve your overall reading speed and ability to answer the questions, all right? So it is a little bit worrying for some of you. You're probably sitting there going, oh my gosh, it's taking far too long. Don't panic. It will come faster, all right? Now, we don't stop there, yeah? We have to go to the next part, which um, was down here. So I'm just going to go to, um, that should be EQ, and that should be AQ. I couldn't see from here. I was too far away from my screen. Let's go with um, emotional intelligence tests. In fact, we haven't quite finished reading the paragraph yet, so we probably should read the whole paragraph. My bad. Emotional intelligence, EQ, uh, we did that already. EQ includes the ability, abilities to motivate yourself and persist in the face of frustrations, to control impulses and delay gratification, to regulate moods and keep distress from swamping the ability to think and to understand and empathize with others. While social or emotional intelligence was a useful concept in explaining many of the real world deficiencies of super intelligent people, it did not go any further than the IQ test in measuring success in real life. Again, some of the most successful people in the business world were obviously lacking in social charm. Okay, measure skills which are likely to improve with age. No mention about age. Assesses people's social skills. So um, it does say and understand and empathize with others. Assessing people's social skills. This one is definitely... Um, B, emotional intelligence, definitely. Measures the ability to uh, deal with real life difficulties. It doesn't actually mention anything about real life difficulties. High scorers learn from their actions, no mention. High scorers are more likely to stay calm in difficult situations. Definitely, definitely, definitely this one because I remember in the text, it says to keep distress from uh, to keep distress from swamping the ability to think, to stop being distressed in times of stress. That would be um, the answer for question number eleven. And notice here that we have just answered two or three questions very, very quickly from the same paragraph. And that will help improve your overall reading speed. So don't forget, this is the, the strategy. Make sure that you focus, persist. It's really, really, really important. And the last one, questions have more than one possible answer. There was no mention about the number of questions which came through. Okay. Um, didn't talk about anything being different. So I should have checked that one before we moved on to the rest of the paragraph. Let's continue with this paragraph. Not all real life difficulties we face are solvable with just good social skills and good social acumen. And good social acumen in one situation may not translate to another. The crucial problem with academic and emotional intelligence scores is that they are both poor predictors of real success in real life. For example, research has shown that IQ tests predict only between 4 to 5, 25% of success in real life, such as job performance. So again, there's no mention in here about research differing. We should probably have a look to see if there's anything else in here which talks about that. Measure skills that are likely to improve with age, no mention. Measures the ability to deal with real life situations, uh, real life difficulties, no mention. High scorers learn from their actions, no mention. Questions have more than one possible answer, no mention. 
Let's continue. Professor Sternberg's group at Yale began from a very different position. Notice that, that we already know that this question is about differing. Yeah, you can see the word differ there, and that's going to be um, different here. So they will give you signposts to help you to traditional researchers into intelligence. Instead of asking what intelligence was and investigating whether it predicted success in life, Professor Sternberg asked what distinguished people who were thriving from those that were not. Instead of measuring this form of intelligence with mathematical or verbal tests, practical intelligence is scored by, to, by answers to real life dilemmas, such as if you were traveling by car and got stranded on a motorway during a blizzard, what would you do? An important contrast between these questions is that in academic tests, there's usually only one answer. Whereas in practical intelligence tests, as in real life, there are several different solutions to the problem. And this, I remember, is the number of answers to the question. And I can go immediately because I know that this is going to be C, practical intelligence tests, because there's more than one possible answer. So I'm going to answer that now quickly because that's the thing that I remember and that really will help me um, as I go forward. So let's go back and have a look at the um, question three. Question three says, it differed from previous studies because A, he used verbal testing instead of mathematics. Not sure. He began by establishing the definition of intelligence. I don't think he mentioned that. He analysed whether intelligence could predict success in real life. And he wanted to find out what was different about successful people. And it tells you right here in this sentence, he said, he asked what distinguished people who were thriving. Maybe you know the word thriving or maybe you don't. Thriving means to be successful. So therefore the answer to uh, three is definitely D. Definitely, definitely, definitely D. Part of the reason why practical intelligence has not been identified before, I don't think there was anything mentioned in that paragraph. So we can go to the next part. Measures which skills are likely to improve with age. No mention about age. Measures the ability to deal with real life difficulties. And they gave us a really good example of a car being stuck in the blizzard in the snow. So this one is definitely C. High scorers are like uh, learn from their actions. I don't think there's any mention there of the uh, that answer. And we've done all the others. Let's continue. The Yale group found that most of the really useful knowledge which successful people have acquired is gained during everyday activities, but typically without conscious awareness. Although successful people's behavior reflects the fact that they have this knowledge, High achievers are often unable to articulate or define what they know. This partly explains why practical intelligence has been so difficult to identify. And that should be a comma, not a full stop. Um, let's see. Part of the reason why practical intelligence has not been identified before is that the behavior has never been studied Successful people are too busy with their everyday lives? No. Successful people cannot put their knowledge into words. That's really clear because it says it here. It says, are often unable to articulate or define what they know. The answer is exactly there. You can see it. Articulate means to say, and then here we've got put their knowledge into words. We always check the final one. Successful people are unaware of their own abilities. There's no mention of that one. And the final part says, in order to increase practical intelligence of employees, companies, when there's no mention about companies, we check these ones as well. Nothing to do with age. Um, high scorers learn from their actions. I didn't find anything there. Let's continue. Professor Sternberg found that the best way to re uh, reach practical intelligence is to ask 
um, successful people to relate examples of crucial inc uh, crucial incidents at work where they solve problems demonstrating skills they had learned while doing their jobs. It would appear that one of the best ways to improving your practical intelligence is to observe master practitioners at work and in particular to focus on the skills they have acquired while doing the job. Oddly enough, this is the basis of traditional apprentice training. Historically, the junior doctor learned by observing the consultant surgeon at work and the junior by assisting the senior banister, uh, barrister. Okay, um, this may, 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 may answer something about this question here, which is uh, measure skills which are likely to improve with age. Um, it doesn't exactly say it, but it does imply that junior doctor uh, the junior lawyer will become uh, will learn from a senior barrister but it doesn't necessarily say that so we're not going to choose um, that one just yet um, it doesn't talk about companies so I don't think that we need to look at this one and I don't think there's anything else maybe there is but I'm just going to continue quickly Another area where practical intelligence appears to resolve a previously unexplained paradox is that performance in academic tests usually declines after formal education ends. Yet most older adults contend that their ability to solve practical problems increases over the years. There is the answer to the question that we just looked at, which was about getting better with age. Therefore, the answer for practical intelligence would be C here. Good. And I don't think there's anything about companies. Let's see. The key implication for organizations and companies is that practical intelligence may not be detectable by conventional auditing and performance measures, measuring procedures. Training new or less capable employees to become more practically intelligent will involve learning from genuinely practical intelligent rather than from training manuals or courses. So what it's saying is that, that people have to learn from other people. So um, let's see if there's anything in here. Adopt an apprentice style system. Organize special courses. Well, no, it says don't organize courses. Devise better training manuals. No, it doesn't say that. But lots of people will look at this and they will look at that and say training manuals or courses and training manuals or courses. And they might choose the answer here, which is definitely the wrong answer carry out an audit. I think it's going to be A here, um, but I, it doesn't necessarily say that just yet. It might it might give a, a more definite answer, but it's definitely not an audit on all employees. Perhaps the biggest challenge in recruitment, as these new studies strongly suggest, that paper for qualifications are unlikely to be helpful in predicting who will be the best at solving your company's problems. Professor Sternberg's research suggests that we should we should start looking at companies in a completely different way and see them as places where huge numbers of problems are being solved all the time where it where it may take new eyes to see the practical intelligence in action. So it would be better to have like an apprentice system here because it does talk about apprentices um, slightly earlier where it says, uh, where was it? somewhere here apprentice training good so the only answer that i'm struggling to find high scorers learn from their actions i think i've missed that one but what i would do is and this is really common i would say that that when i've taken the test before it's really common to miss a type of question that's no problem at all because what you'll find is when you when you apply this strategy you will finish the the, the section faster and you have time to go back and find that sentence and you will have an idea of what that what that answer is so does anybody have the place where they found the answer to question 10 high scorers learn from their actions i i must have missed that one uh, let's see if I can find it in here. Um, not here. They learn from their actions.
I'm struggling to find the exact place here. Does anybody else, can anybody in the chat tell me where they found that one and see whether you can um, pop that in the chat? Basically, we're looking for the answer to question 10. And the reality is, if you only if you miss one question and you get all the other questions right, we're not worried because you're going to get a band 9 or a band 8.5 anyway. So really, finding that last question may not even be that big of a deal anyway. So let's see if anybody else can find that. Um, somebody said the last... Di Diana says the last paragraph. Let's see if it does say it in the last paragraph. I must have missed it. I always... Um, Let's see. Mm. I don't see that where it says high scorers learn from their actions. I don't find anything in this paragraph which necessarily says or paraphrases the fact that they will learn from their actions. I can't see that in that paragraph. So I'm not convinced that is the... The, the place where you find the answer. And remember that when you do the test, you've got to be really sure that you found it in the um, in the test. Somebody says Yale Group found that. Mohammed says starting line. Let's see if we can find it in that paragraph. And if we can't find it, no big deal. Where's the Yale? Yale, Yale, Yale. Ah, yes. Thank you very much, Mohammed. You are the gold medal winner today. The Yale group found that the most of the really useful knowledge which successful people have acquired is gained during everyday activities, but typically without conscious awareness. Gold medal to you, Mohammed. Fantastic work. Good job to you. And that answer is definitely C. Now, again... I'm going to say don't panic if you think that this is um, going to take you longer. It will take you longer in the first few stages and the first few tries that you do. But what I would say is don't panic. Practice, practice, practice. And I promise you this strategy will improve your overall reading score. Good. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to head over here and see if anybody has any questions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting ready because we're going to have a session in this box where you guys can come in and drop in and ask me some questions. Maybe you've got your test soon coming up. Maybe you want to ask a question about a different part of the test. I will open the chat room. But for now, if you think of any questions, let me know. I'm just popping on my headphones and see if... We can get started with the YouTube session. Okay, so I am going to pop in the chat a link to today's drop-in session. Now, remember, as usual, we always have some rules when we do this session. And the rules of the session, I'll pop them in the chat. So I'll pop them in here. The rules are, you must have your camera on. You must have your sound on. You must be in a quiet environment. Be somewhere where it's quiet and not too noisy. And finally, be prepared with a question or talk about something which is related to IELTS. So again, please, you must have your camera on, have your sound on, be in a quiet environment and ask a question which is related to the exam. I've just put the link for the session in the chat box. You will find the link to that session in here. You can see the link here. I'm going to start that session very shortly and we will have some people coming through and hopefully joining us in the class today. Let's see who we have. Let's see if we can um, have... Oh, we've got some people coming into the class already. Fantastic. Um, okay, let's get some of you joining me.
Alrighty. We have got a student who has already joined us. Oh, they've left. They didn't join us. Now we should have Sang. Are you able to turn on your video, please? Thank you, Sang. Good to have you. Now, before we start, Sang, I just want to fix any potential sound problems. So, Sang, hopefully... Oh, it's Akmal. We've got a, a new... People just keep coming in and leaving. Hello, Akmal. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Fantastic. I can hear you, which is wonderful. And I think the students can hear you too. So are you calling in from somewhere exotic today? Where's Where's your hometown? Uh, I am from Pakistan and my good name is Akmal. And I'm following you for almost four, four, four months. And Fantastic, Akmal. And what's your IELTS kind of story? Why are you taking the IELTS test? Uh, because I want to go abroad for my uh, further education. I'm currently a student and I'm studying Master in Business business Administration. Wonderful. And and what's, your, a, what's your plan? Where do you, what do you want to study and where do you want to go? I want to go to Norway because my big brother is living there. And he did PhD in Marketing Management and uh, he convinced me to come here for either in other countries and help people, uh, getting a little more education. So I'm struggling for reading part, especially in writing as well. Uh, but uh, your videos like about reading change my per perception because uh, we are used to talk about like skimming and scanning. These uh, skills are helpful, but not because close reading is very important when we uh, indulge uh, ourselves into reading part. You're really, so, really, really yeah. true. So do you have any special questions or specific questions before we move on to another student? Is there anything you want to ask? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, how can I, uh, you know, study from your material? Is any any kind of, you know, uh, uh, strategy I adopt because I want to learn uh, from my daily? Sure. Try to watch uh, all the videos that we have. They will help you with um, the overall exam. And I'm really sorry to tell you that we've got the new IELTS Daily app. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, I promise. And on the app, there are so many cool features of the app. But it's not quite ready yet, Akmal. It's coming very soon, but I promise it will be with you very shortly. Try to come onto our website and download as many sample answers as you can. Study the sample answers and make sure that you really understand, for, particularly for writing, how to um, how to answer those questions. But it was a real pleasure talking to you today, Akmal. I'm going to go and speak to somebody else. Um, good luck with your said. IELTS journey, and we'll see you soon. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Pleasure. Goodbye. Um, we're going to come to... Hello, who is this person? I don't. I can't see your name, so I just want to make sure your name is correct. What's your name? Hello. Hi. Hello. We can see you. Hi. What's your name and where are you coming from? My name is Olajim Okay. I'm calling from Lagos, Nigeria. Fantastic, Olajim Okay. And what's your question for us? Oh, you need to hold your microphone up to your mouth. We can really hear you when you. Okay. I'm calling from Lagos, Nigeria. My name is Olajim, okay? Hi. Nice to see you. Lagos, Nigeria. Oh, you need to you need to watch it on Zoom and not on the YouTube channel. Only watch it on Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm having issues with the reading. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, just try and mute on the YouTube. Press mute on YouTube. Okay. Okay, so um No, press mute on YouTube so that you can't hear YouTube. I want you to listen to Zoom, but I don't want you to listen to YouTube. Okay. <laughs> don't press mute on Zoom. So, uh Olajimoko keeps pressing mute on Zoom. Hello, you're back again. Okay. 
Okay, Don't now? listen to YouTube. Don't turn the YouTube video off. Okay, okay. Can you hear me now? We can hear you perfectly. Okay, so um, I'm having issues with. No, I did not. <laughs> You're listening to YouTube and there's a delay. On, we only listen to Zoom. Look at Zoom and only look at Zoom. Okay. Okay, what we might do, Olajim, okay, I'm going to come back to you. You can fix it. Turn off YouTube and we'll come back to you, I promise. Okay, we're going to um we're going to come to Stephanie. Hello to Stephanie. I apologize. Nice to see you. Hello. Nice to see you. Too. What's your question for us, Stephanie? Okay, I want to know um the difference between the writing tax one and then writing tax two. Ah, you don't know the, the difference in writing task one. I'm, I'm a little confused. Which of them do you, um, which of them do you have to write a conclusion? Okay, so writing task two usually requires a conclusion, which is your essay. Writing task one doesn't need a conclusion, but it does need an overview if you're taking the academic training test, which is the. Um, which is not the letter. It's The academic training test is the report, so you have to write about a line graph, a bar chart. You don't need a conclusion, but you do need to have an overview. It's really, really important. Right. Okay. Yeah? And then with the reading section, um, I learned that most of the questions follow, like um, question one might follow paragraph A, question two might follow paragraph B, how true is that? And is that does it apply in all the questions that you might be meeting on Thursday? Great question. Great question. The answer is not all questions come in order. Some types do, but sometimes don't. So, for example, if it's a matching paragraph headings question, that's never in order because that wouldn't make sense. If question one was paragraph A and question two was paragraph B, that doesn't make sense. So that's never going to be in order. But for most most questions like true, false, not given, yes, no, not given, or um, multiple choice questions, they're usually in order. Sometimes the very final question in the whole qu in the whole test may be not in order. So it's sometimes it's not in order. But for most of the time, those types of questions are. And the question that we did today, which was find the um, emotional in intelligence test or the in intellectual IQ test or the um, what, whatever it might be, those types of questions or your matching people, they won't be in order because that wouldn't make sense to find them in order. Oh, okay. Yep. Thank great, you very much. Great to have you. Yeah, great to have great you. Great to have you too. <laughs> see, see you later. Um, we've got a few people. We've got um, Asma. Asma doesn't seem to have their... Ah, Ayush. Ayush has camera on. Hello to Ayush. Nice to see you. Hello. Hello, Ayush. What's your question for us today? Uh, my question is, uh, can you give me some tips for list of heading? For what, sorry? I can didn't you hear. give me some tips for list of headings? The list Range. of headings. There's no There's no difference. There's, it's the same type of question. Lots of people say that it's going to be a different type of question, but it really isn't. It's it's not different at all. It's always the same. So um, no difference in the strategy. You've got to make sure that you are reading the paragraph and then looking at all the questions. The paragraph heading uh, question is just the same. Lots of people think it's different, but it's really not. Okay. Apologies if that's not very good um, advice for you, Ayush. Okay. Nice to see you. I'm going to go to Asma. Hello mm. to Asma. Oh, hello. Chris, Good to see nice you. to what's, see you. What's your question for us? Uh, I'm currently have a trouble with how to answer correctly, but the true or false not given because sometimes I get the answer wrong. Good question. So, true or false not given. True. You have to find a sentence in the text which means the same. False. You have to find a sentence in the text 
which is contradictory. It means the opposite. So black and white are the opposites of each other. Therefore, it is um, false. It is the fastest car. It is the slowest car. That is contradictory. So they are the opposites. If it says the car is green, then there's no there's no uh, information on the color of the car. Okay, so mm -hmm. they have to be the same, the opposite, or no mention. I actually made a video on true, false, not given questions. So I think it's if you become a, a starter member of the channel, you can go and watch that. Thank you. Nice Thank to you see so you, much. Asma. Nice to see you too. Yeah, and I'm going to come over to Lynn. Lynn, I saw Lynn with um, the camera on. Let's see if Lynn is going to be saying hi to us. No, we don't have Lynn. Lynn decided to disappear. We'll go to Wilson. Let's see if Wilson is available. Okay, Vuban is ready for us. Hello, Vuban. Hopefully you can join us. Hello, Vuban. Hello. Nice to see you. What's your question for us? Oh, we lost Vuban. Who do we have now? Wilson. Wilson, Wilson, Wilson. Hi, Chris. Nice to see you. What's your question for us? Uh, yeah, um, actually, um, on September 24, I'm going to have this um, computer delivered exam. And, and my question is on the reading and listening section, is it okay I can um, capitalize all the letters for the answers? Are you doing computer delivered or read it out or paper based? Computer based. Okay, so it doesn't matter. You can do capital okay. letters or not. If you're doing the paper-based, you should always write in capital letters to make sure that your handwriting is clear. But for the computer delivered test, it makes no difference at all. But when you're doing your writing test, do not always write in capitals. When you're doing the writing test, just capitalize as you would do normally. Okay. Good. Anything Thank else you. that you want to ask? Uh, that would be all. Thank you. Nice to see you. Good. Go well. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Let's okay. see if anybody else wants to come and say hi. We should have Mohammed. Oh, we've got Mohammed there. Nice to see you, Mohammed. What's your question for us? Hi. Hello. Uh, hi, can you hear me? We can hear you perfectly. What's your question for us? Sir, uh, uh, it's my exam tomorrow and I wanted to ask some tips about writing. So can you give some tips for writing as I'm not getting good bands in writing? Uh, who's checking your work? Uh, it's a coaching center and my teacher is uh, checking my uh, test, but he's not giving reason because he already got so much uh, writing tasks to check. So he's, he's got no time to answer. That's a shame because one of the biggest problems with writing is that people don't get the, the best feedback for yeah. um, for making sure that they can improve. Yeah. I, are you taking the academic training or general training? Uh, I'm taking academic training. Okay, so my tip is make sure for task one you understand the difference between all the types of questions, maps, bar charts, processes, flow charts, um, okay. floor plans, all of those things, they're all different. Okay. Do not make any errors in the figures that you give. So make sure that all oh. your errors are accurate. Make sure that uh. your information is organized logically. And for writing task two, make sure that you keep your ideas fairly simple Present, yeah. extend, and support your ideas. That means explaining a little bit. Don't use any fake facts. Don't use any fake studies from Harvard. Um, don't do anything uh, like that. But uh, I, uh, I have been taught that uh, we can make fake examples. 
your your okay? teacher is telling you the wrong thing. No, do not. Uh, like, it is not gonna check that either this example is there or not. It is present or not. You just give fake example and it will look good. No, it will not look good. Okay, okay, sir. And uh, sir, the content that we are going to write in our task one, the, is that really matter? A hundred percent. Okay, okay. You so will go you from so a band much. nine to a band okay. six if you get any of the facts and figures wrong. Okay, okay. So yeah. thank so you so very much. We wish you the best of luck for your test tomorrow. We hope that thank everything you. goes well. It's nice that you are the final student to come and say, um, just do your very best. Have a look at some of the sample answers that we have on our website. Otherwise, okay, sh sure. best, best sure. wishes. Sure. Thank, thank you, sir. You're looking great. Okay, so um, thank you to all the students for coming along in today's class. It's wonderful to have them all here. Um, I hope you learned something from today's class. If you did, please give this video a like and a thumbs up. Share it with people who maybe you'll go to an IELTS coaching center and you can say, ah, oh, I watched this awesome video with Chris from IELTS Daily. It was a super interesting video. Don't these classes go really fast? I start um, at my time. It's six o'clock where I live and it's already seven o'clock and the hour goes so quickly and I hope that you all enjoyed it as well. Um, for now, don't forget next week, I, I say don't forget, you didn't know because I didn't tell you. There is no class next Wednesday. I'm sorry, I'm not here. So I might be able to have a class next Friday. I'll post the details on the YouTube channel. If we don't have a class on Friday, then I'll come back to you a week, uh, two weeks today. But I'm sorry there's no class next Wednesday. For now, good luck to anybody who's taking the test very soon. We will, we're sure that you will do very well. Make sure that you're prepared. Otherwise, um, take care and keep studying hard.